So, if I were going to start my own religion, it would be about counting things. And not just anything, beautiful things like flowers or galaxies. And uh, I actually did that. I counted seven point, actually I counted five million galaxies because I've been making this film called In Saturn's Rings that's made from seven and a half million real photographs from space. And when people hear that, they always get two questions, how, why? And uh, why is the easy one? Because I'm passionate about images from space, and I wanted to share them on the biggest screens possible. In fact, screens that in IMAX theaters are about eight stories high. But the how, well, that's the hard part. Even if I wanted to tell you it's long, it's boring, there's a lot of techno babble and tedium, and even if I could remember every step, it really wouldn't tell you much about kind of what in the world I was trying to do. So, the best way to answer that question is the old joke, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer is one spoonful at a time. So how do you make a film with 7.5 million photographs? One photograph at a time. Now, the interesting part about this is even as recently as about 2014, when you looked at stuff online about the film, it would say, made from a million photographs, or then it was 2.5 million photographs, and then suddenly it was 7.5 million photographs. And that's my story today, is where did those 5 million photographs sort of suddenly, from people looking on the outside, come from? And the interesting thing about, I keep saying, I'll say million a lot, be warned, during this talk, um, is we throw those words out, you know, a thousand, a million, and we really don't grasp what those means. And scientists have kind of figured out that we can only kind of hand, handle a handful of things simultaneously at one time, roughly four or five. And it's funny enough, our hands have four fingers and a thumb. And that turns out is a very kind of fundamental limit that people have. And that kind of leads into this story of mine where scientists say that, yes, we can intellectually grasp concepts like a million or a billion, but after my experience of working with millions of photographs from space, I kind of wonder if we really can. So, let's go to 2014. It's the beginning of 2014. Our film is coming out in late 2014 with 2.5 million photographs. And I've got this amazing group of volunteers that has been helping process all these images, and we've been turning them into these old school multiplane animations. This is not CGI, this is real photographs, and they look a little something like this. So this is the planet Saturn, that's the uh, Death Star Moon, Mimas, and uh, insert your own Star Wars joke there. And this was made from about 30,000 real photographs, black and white, from the Cassini spacecraft that we processed and turned into this kind of thing called a multiplane photo animation. And multiplane comes from Walt Disney. But if you think about space films, and whether it's documentary or fiction, you know, your favorites, mine or 2001, Cosmos, Star Wars, Star Trek, there's that flying through galaxy shot, you know, where galaxies are whizzing by and you're just going out into space. And I'm doing a space movie, so I've got to have that shot. But that's a problem, because we're using only these still photographs. And that would require a lot of still photographs. Crazy idea. But people who know me, um, some of whom are here today, know that if something's crazy, that's generally something I'm going to do. And it turns out that there are an equally crazy group of people that happen to be scientists and astrophysicists. And uh, they do this thing called the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. What they're doing, and have been doing for many years, and will continue many years in the future, is they're taking powerful telescopes, and they are taking images of the entire sky, all 360 degrees around us, of everything that they can see. But they're doing something even better, is when they take a photograph of tiny little section, and this still is where they currently are, and they're mapping over the northern part of the sky, they are identifying the galaxy that's there, locating it precisely what direction, and they're locating exactly how far away it is. 
And we were like, bingo, this is exactly what we need. They've already done the work for us. We need, just need to cut these things out. There's a database that has that information. We'll have our five million galaxies. So that's what we started to do. We were going to write some code and grab this stuff out. And I talked to the volunteers. They said, it'll take about three to six months. I said, well, it'll probably take closer to nine to 12. But that gets us done by the end of 2014. Yes. But that's when it went all kind of horribly wrong. Because it turns out that sounded kind of flippant, and it was. We didn't know what we were doing. And when we got into it, we realized that this was not going to take months, but this was going to take years. And that was kind of a tough moment for this is a nonprofit, all volunteer, supported by individual donation kind of project. And what are we going to do? You know, so we canceled our coming out in 2014. And it was changed to coming soon with no answer to the question of when soon was. And uh, we're like, and so I had to pull out a new call for volunteers, get some people in that were a lot smarter than I was to try to figure out how we were going to do this. So we started working, and after about a year, 18 months, we had folders, many thousands of folders with 50,000 galaxies of Peach in these individual folders on the computer. And we were like, yes, high fives, we've done it. And it was our premature celebration number two. Um, and if you've ever tried to open a folder on your computer that has 50,000 pictures in it, that's not easy just on its own, just to look and see what you have. And here's an actual screenshot of one of those folders. Now, from there, it's like, hey, there's stuff in there, and it's galaxies, and it's cool. But once you start looking at it, it's not good. There was this stuff. And we're rookies. We don't know what we're doing. We're not astrophysicists. What is this? These are satellite trails, jet trails, stars in our local galaxy, our Milky Way, that are overexposed and blown out. And there's like 400,000 of these things in there. So we're like, there was a lot of expletives at this point. Um, <laughs> so what do we do? And we had a lot of discussion. We had some really smart computer physicists types, and there's like they were talking about writing code to try to use AI to identify what's good and what's bad, and it's like computers are smart, but they're not that smart. Um, we thought we'd get a huge team of volunteers, but that we couldn't figure any logistic way to uh, make that work. And I started doing some testing with this about, well, how long is this actually going to take to go through this? I really don't have any idea. And as soon as I started doing it, I ran into a real basic problem. There's no accident that there's four images here on the screen. That's about all I could look at at one time and figure out, that's good, that's bad, no, I can fix that one. And I thought, well, maybe I don't have the right software, the right computer, you know. But no matter what I did, I kept running into this uh, kind of limitation. And it turns out scientists already know this. Yet another kind of basic fact that we learned. And the, we can only handle about four things simultaneously. And each time they test and study this, the number drops lower. It doesn't increase. Um, we're basically kind of slow-witted if it's like I can see four things. So I want you to try something right now. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to imagine the three most important people in your life. Just picture them. Look at them all at the same time. You will see all their faces. You can do that. Now, I want you to keep your eyes closed and imagine the 10 most important people in your life. Picture them all at the same time. See them all. This gets a little harder. They start to slip away at the edges. They're a little fuzzy. You can't, you're like, who have I got in my list of 10? Of, you know, now try 100 of the most important people in your life. You're done. You don't even have to, you can open your eyes. You don't have to, you don't have to keep trying that. So that's what, that's what you, you don't think. You know, we throw these numbers around and we really don't know what they mean. So faced with this fact, I, I love spreadsheets, pulled out a spreadsheet. It's going to take one person to do this perfectly. I would I'd do a test folder and see how long time me. It was going to take one person 18 years to do this perfectly. And I was like, nah, I can't ask anybody to do that. So th the obvious answer is we'll get 18 people to do this in a year or, you know, 100 or so. You know, 180 and we'll get it done real fast. But we realize a very basic problem. This is all a judgment call, if you remember that earlier slide. That one good, no, that one's not good, no, that one's bad. And it depends down to the inch how far, how 
you are to the computer screen, how big the computer screen is, what's the resolution you've set, what thumbnail size, it's all a judgment call. So it was gonna be a one person job, and by one person, we're, this, uh, this is the one person. And again, what do you do? Well, this was, these galaxies were gonna be in 12 minutes of a 40 minute film, so there was really no other option, and that's what I did. So over about an 18 month period, I thought it would take six months, it took me nine, for nine continuous months, I sat at my computer and one day I did a little time lapse of what that day looked like and it was this. So I'm just going through thumbnails, I'm selecting the bad ones and selecting the bad ones and throwing them away and then once I've thrown them away, I'm opening up the fixable ones and I'm fixing them cutting out the, the star, the jet trail, and saving the galaxy. And I did this, again, you know, eight, ten hours a day, six days a week. And it was really hard. In fact, the first week, I thought I was going to kind of lose my mind. I started having kind of mild auditory hallucinations. <laughs> and <laughs> I had this terrible anxiety. And I very quickly figured out, having remembered an old TED Talk, that the intense visual stimulation, I needed something grounded. Normally I can't listen to podcasts or book and tape, but the sound of the human voice really helped us out. So I was like, okay, I'll start with unabridged Game of Thrones, which lasted me two months. George R. R. Martin is the millions of words answer to millions of galaxies. Podcasts, comedy specials, by the end of it, I could have an entire detailed phone conversation with someone and be doing this and they'd have no idea that I was doing something else. It was that much of a split. And, you know, this eventually became like a pilgrimage for me. I realized one step at a time, I'm down this journey. And being, of course, in the modern age, we don't carve our names on a stone by the side of the road. We post on social media. So my friends, um, fortunately, I don't think all of them unfriended me. And they may have hid me from my feed. But I, you know, kind of posted those milestones along the way uh, as I kept going through these millions. And then beyond social media, something kind of happened that was much more powerful is looking at galaxy upon galaxy upon galaxy. I, I realized I was getting a special experience, kind of like my, my own private Everest mountain that I was going up, that I was getting a glimpse of the universe and the size and the scope and the majesty and everything that we can't put into words. And to quote my favorite film, I was getting an experience that was beyond the infinite. And that was kind of special. But the weight of this idea of million didn't really hit me until it was something far more earthbound. One day I was sitting there processing galaxies and there was a podcast on and it mentioned something about the millions that had died in the Holocaust. And the word million just kind of hit me like it never hit me before because I thought, what if I were sitting here looking at five and a half million photographs of those that died in the Holocaust? And I couldn't think about that very long. It was a really overwhelming thought. And we just don't really think about how big a number something like the word a million is. And if you take away one thing from today, the next time you throw around the word, like I've told you a thousand times to stop doing that, this is the millionth time I have to do this, try counting out loud to that number, whatever number you throw out. Even if you throw out 25, you'll find 25 is a lot longer um, than you think it is to count to it. And that, was my journey, and like every journey, I finally got to the end, and I literally had a journey of 5.5 million steps. And when I got to the end, I kind of burst out into tears just from relief. I required steroid shots in both elbows. I have taught myself to mouse both left and right, but, and uh, had my sanity intact, and we managed to create this shot with 5 million galaxies. And it's now in the film, and the whole 12 minutes has all these millions of galaxies. So I'm gonna share that um, uh, in my close here, this shot. A couple of caveats here is that one, um, there are in fact five million countable galaxies in this shot. You will not be able to see them here. This is a high definition projector, 
trivia fact, there's only two million pixels there. So you're missing a lot. And then there's some watermarks because the, the film comes out in spring, again, in Saturn Springs, comes out in uh, late spring this year. And, you know, just go online to see what's going on with the film. So there's some, the distributor has some watermarks that are on the screen that, uh, you know, in case someone's going to steal 5.5 million galaxies. So without further ado, here is the shot with a little narration from LeVar Burton. No human being has ever seen this before. Five million galaxies, each one, even the smallest speck of light contains billions of stars. Thank you.